All right, welcome back to Stock Tricks with Nick for this week's breakout watch list for December 28th through the 31st. Quick reminder, the market is closed on Friday. That'll be the first of the new year. Um, and if you are new to the channel, we do these breakout watch lists Sunday morning and then on either Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll do a live stream uh, refreshing this watch list and breaking down any stocks that you guys want to see. And then on Friday, I do a trading recap going over the stocks that I traded and looking at both of the watch lists, how they did compared to the market. For today's watch list, uh, all of these have potential to break out within the next coming with within the coming week. Um, they're all above their 200 day simple moving average. There's little overhead volume uh, on most of them. I'll cover that in a little bit more detail. And they're 150% or more above their 52 week low. So last week we had five stocks that had 10% returns or better. Uh, these are the highest of those LSPD, 18%, CRSP, 13%, and CDAY, 13%. So if you get to the end of this video and you found anything useful, please leave a like and comment on any, any stocks that I didn't mention today, but you think have breakout potential because I want to be as prepared as you are going into the next week. Give me a follow on StockTwits, Twitter, and TikTok as well. All right, quick disclaimer. Anything that we go over today is just um, for educational purposes only. It's the, the research that I've done, things that I'm looking for in the upcoming week, uh, please do your own due diligence. Trading comes with financial risk. So here's our stock lineup for the day. Uh, not going to read through all of these right now because we'll be going over their charts. But uh, the stars are stocks that I currently have positions in with AA, uh, DraftKings, and Palantir. All right, with that said, let's just jump into the charts. First, we'll start, we'll just go alphabetical order on this. So first, starting with AA. This is a nice high tight flag. So you have a move 100% high from uh, end of October here. And then only a pullback. I think this was maybe 18%. No, 13%. So even shallower of a pullback. Uh, the lighter the pullback from the high, the better. That shows that these prices don't have much uh, disagreement on it. So pulled back, you have the 20 day simple moving average in green, the eight day exponential moving average in purple here. You can see uh, Friday had a nice inside day on very light volume. Average true range down here, ATR, that's coming down. That's showing the uh, kind of volatility with the, the bars. And relative strength holding up fine during this pullback. So uh, you could kind of do a diagonal here, break over the diagonal, um, or for an even tighter uh, stop, you could buy with a break over Friday or that would be Thursday's high. Thursday's high of 22.34, and then uh, leave your stop um, a little bit lower than the high, uh, the low from December 22nd. You could get just a 4% stop on that. If you go the low of the entire range, 6%, or maybe you, you split up that stop, that's something that I like to do sometimes. So that's AA. Next, we have Amazon. This one's not quite a high tight flag, but uh, has obviously moved up really well uh, since March, up 114% to the peak, and is now going through what Mark Minervini calls the VCP pattern, volatility contraction pattern. So with that, each pullback is going to be on lighter and lighter magnitude as traders agree on the price. So the first pullback is 20% from high to low. Next pullback here is 15% from high to low. Third pullback, 11%. Now you get another one, 6%. And now this is getting extremely, extremely tight. 3% pullback the last time. So you can tell each one of those pullbacks are getting lighter and lighter. Uh, and then something that I like to see, the last pullback here, very light volume. That might be um, that might be impacted by the shortened trading week, the holiday. Um, but you can see now you have the 50, the 20, and the 8-day moving average all right in a line. Uh, this can't get any tighter. So you uh, a buy point would be a break over December 17th high. That's three, $3,263. And then you can put your stop under that range. So uh, a, a very large name. So if, if you have uh, a little bit more liquidity than others, uh, this could be one of those larger names that, that you put some size on. That's AMZN, Amazon. 
Next, we have APPN. I think this was on the breakout watch list last week. I tried trading it as well. Um, so let's zoom out. You have the 200, the 50, the 20, and the 8 all in the right order. And this really strong move up 245%. But then you do have that, that pullback. What is that, 40%? So I took this trade. It was a little bit aggressive because typically with a 40% pullback, anything over 25%, once it violates those high tight flag rules, you would want it to build out a little bit of a base. So the move, uh, I, I bought it um, on the 22nd here as it broke over the previous high from the 18th. So right when it did that, bought, sold some into strength, but got stopped out half of the rest um, at my entry and then half when it dropped under the low. So not a large loss at all, but uh, th this was a little premature to be buying a breakout. Typically with those 40% pullbacks, you want it to build out a larger base. But now um, it is continuing to tighten up. Volume very, very light. You can see average true range coming in here. So what you're looking for is maybe a couple more days of sideways action. Maybe this is something that we look at just to start the new year. But um, ideally, we get one day where we pull back and we undercut some of these lows. That would shake out a lot of the traders that maybe got in with me but didn't have as tight of stops. So you get those guys out and then you set up the trade again. But look at a couple times here, the low of the day bounced right off that 20 day simple moving average. So finding some support there. Uh, so I, I would love to just see a crank under that, stop all those traders out and then break out higher. So uh, I have alerts set both above uh, this diagonal and then also below the previous lows from uh, the 21st. So. Uh, always setting alerts higher and lower to, to possibly get some pullback buys, but that's APPN. Next, we have AVNW. This one has been, as they all have been, in a strong uptrend. I think this might be a high tight flag, 121% up. Yeah, so 120% up, 18% back. Uh, within that 25% from the highs, that's the high tight flag. You have Good volume coming in on the breakouts. So you see all the volume on the green days higher than the volume on the pullbacks. Um, and now it's it's kind of agreeing on the price. I didn't like Thursday's move where it ran up to that 20 day simple moving average and then squatted from there. So that's now our, our buy target zone. So if we break over that high from Thursday of 36.53, that's a possible buy point. Uh, the problem with that is you do have to either set just an arbitrary 5% stop or maybe split your stop uh, if, if you're gonna try and undercut the, the other lows with your risk. So maybe, and when I'm talking about these stocks, if they just set up another week of tri sideways trading, that's even better, but wanted to, to put this uh, on the watch list because it does have that breakout potential. But definitely, if we can get over the 20 day simple moving average, we also get over this, uh, volume shelf so this is the volume profile the volume at each uh, price range so if we could get over that 20 day simple moving average we also get over the resistance of that that volume shelf so alert set for that price that's av and w next we have bcov and this was a stock that was on last week's watch list uh, that just basically traded sideways and set it up even better so zooming out you got the 250 28 on the right order uh, you kind of ha have this mini cup and handle forming, maybe a little bit early to call it that, but uh, now the 20 day simple moving average is rushing up. It's sitting right on the eight day and right just above that, that volume profile there. Um, so what I'm looking for is just a break over the two highs here. So 1791, 1790, call it 1791, a break over that would be a possible buy point. Also wanted to cover ATR coming uh very much in so you like that price agreeing uh price relativity compared to the qqqs holding up very nicely and then volume during this sideways action very very light minus uh this 18th is the quadruple witching so that's kind of throwing the chart off a little bit but uh really really nice volume coming in as everything's getting nice and tight 20 day volume profile let's set the alert for 1790 or maybe set the alert a little bit lower so you can be prepared to put on a trade if it breaks 1791. That's BCOV, uh, made its way back on the watch list from last week. Next, we have BRKS. 
same story, 258, uh, 28. This one, the ATR is still pretty high because these bars are very wide. Um, but, oops, let me, BRKS, right? Yeah. But I wanted to, to point this out because the volume got extremely light the last couple of days. So this is a lighter traded name, only uh, 125,000. So you're not going to get a ton of size on a trade like this, but uh, it did move up just short of a high type flag. So 67%. So it still has some power behind it, but doesn't meet the criteria of the high type flag. Um, but now you have the 200 day, or the 20 day simple moving average holding right there. We're above the main portion of the volume shelf. Um, and you have basically three ish days of highs through there. So um, I'm setting an alert 75, 70, 75, 75, just so uh, once if it breaks over this high of 7608 on December 15th, that would be my buy point. That's BRKS. Next we have CMBM. I have to trade, oops, CMBM. And I've traded this in the past, uh, got in on, where was it? Got in on this diagonal breakout. Um, and then they did a secondary offering that that shook everything up. But now it's setting up really nicely. We had double inside days on Wednesday and Thursday. Very light volume coming in. Average true range tightening up. Um, so a break over that would be Tuesday's high of 2802 would be a possible buy point. You can see this has been in a monster uptrend the entire year. So uh, a name with some power, some consistency has not crossed over the 50 day the entire time. So something you, you definitely like to see and double inside days are, are pretty rare. Good price acceptance. So uh, let's see some volume come in with a breakout and uh, look at 2802. It's possible at point. That's CMBM, now CMRX, not to confuse it. Um, this one had that, that jump uh, and then kind of built out what uh, Leif Serrata talks about, a rocket base where you have a move up uh, like a high type flag, but then you have a pullback greater than the 25%. This one's 43%. At that point, you need to start building out a base. So like we talked about with, uh, what was it, APPN, where I took the trade a little bit early. This is the type of base that you like to see kind of build up, build up. And then um, you can see just at some previous highs through here, it hit, made a little pullback, and then shot forward. So this is a rocket base taking off and tons of volume coming in with the breakout. And then as it's pulling back, volume got very, very quiet. Um, this is one that I would I would love to see just trade sideways or even down a little bit for the next week and then set up for next for the following week. But you do have basically three three days of highs uh, right through there as a possible buy point. So 524, 524, 524, all the same price. Um, so a break over that would be your your buy point. Um, I, and then why I wanted to trade sideways and tighten up a little bit is if you're trying to use a stop at a previous low, that's a 9% move down to the bottom here. Or if you're just using the previous days, that's still seven and a half. Um, so for me, it's going to have to tighten up um, a little bit if I'm going to take that trade, or you can use an arbitrary 5% stop or whatever uh, fits your trading strategy the most. But CMRX, uh, let's at least throw it on the watch list, maybe give it two weeks to, to set up. Next, we have CRIS. And this one, let me throw on my trade history. Also tried this trade a little bit early, uh, but high type flags were working very well. Uh, the past two weeks, so wanted to take another risk on that. Uh, let's see, what was this move? So 600 whatever percent move, obviously uh, possible high type flag, and then you pull back from the highs to the lows of only 18%. And then we did get out that day, but then squatted, so took the trade off a little bit, maybe 2% down on the trade. Uh, then tracked it sideways. We had an undercut day of some previous lows on, that would be Wednesday. And then Thursday was an inside day, setting this trade up really well. So I'm looking just for a break over Wednesday's high of 824 as a possible buy point. I put the trade on on Friday to a stop buy order at 824, but we never hit that. Um, so that that's the area I'm watching. Uh, if it does pull back 
and, and kind of sets up later, I'll be watching the 20 day simple moving average. But again, I have some alerts set below the low of December 17th. That's seven, nope, 713. See if we crank lower and then uh, revisit the highs. That would be uh, really nice to see. Otherwise, a break over 824 is a possible buy point. That's CRIS. Next, we have CTRA. Another kind of double, oops. Uh, another kind of double bounce through here. So you had breakout and then a nice base built and then a very strong breakout. I think this was, yeah, 100% 100, 100 breakout in just four or five trading days. Lots of volume coming in with that move. Now we have some sideways action, sideways down to the eight day exponential moving average, volume getting nice and light again. Um, another one that I would, I would love for uh, some sideways action and at least one day where it pulls under these lows because now you could see this. I drew this in two seconds. All the traders are seeing this. So everyone has their stops just below these lows. So what I would like to see being on the outside of the trade right now is a, a day where this pulls down under all these lows, stops everyone out, and then all the names that are either still in the stock are really strong holders or they're new traders that are coming in giving the stock new new blood. So again, I'm setting an alert lower. Let's see if that firms up a little bit. Um, otherwise, a break over, that would be Wednesday's high, get, trying to get it uh, get it right with the shortened trade week. So 1320 uh, would be a possible buy point if it just takes off uh, come Monday. That's CTRA. Now we're going into the back half of the list, the next 10. Uh, this is DraftKings, so you can see my buy flag. I did purchase uh, on Wednesday with a break over Tuesday's high, uh, as this did, made a little cup and handle there. Volume nice and light. ATR, uh, basically, I guess it's coming up a little bit, but that's because it's now in, a, in an uptrend. Um, we saw a pen really take off, so missed the move on pen let's see if we can get some with DraftKings. uh sports are back i that's probably priced in a little bit but uh nba started last week uh so let's see if a break over now wednesday's high of 54.73 would be a possible buy point or if you just want to wait till the break over december 18th high that's 55.98 call it 56. um but Definitely has some power behind the name. Look at the, the year's chart. So, so that is DraftKings, D, uh, DKNG. Next, we have HIMX. This was on the watch list, I think, on Wednesday. Um, you can see I've tried to trade this a couple times, but the last one I did a pullback buy where we did get that uh, gap down, undercut all the lows in the trade, and then we rallied up to the previous day's high. So that's when I put the, the trade on, the second trade at least. 678 took the trade there. Um, or I must have took it the next day as it broke over that day's high. So 678. We got out on Wednesday. It looked like we broke over $7, so high 710. Looked like it was going to take off. But as it was breaking out, very little volume was coming in with the breakout over 7. So at that point, I I moved my stop up to my entry point because I said if this is going to go, it's going to go. Otherwise, let's give this um, let's let's take the money off the table, take the risk off the table. Check back next week, and it did pull back, squatted that day, and then we undercut the low, hit my stop. So I got out for even, didn't have any risk on the trade after it did make that move up. Um, but watching watching for volume definitely helped uh, save money because maybe this does just break down and uh, could have been a big loser. But I think it's still set up. Uh, let's see, what kind of move was this? 110% move up and then from the peak to the bottom, only 13%. So uh, definitely something to watch. I don't like to turn my back on a quality setup just because I've been shaken out a couple times. Uh, you typically see stocks shake out and then and then rip so let's keep an eye on this uh you could draw downward diagonal as a possible buy point so i guess on monday that would be around seven just call it seven dollars a break over seven could be viable but um, if you want to wait till a break over 710 get get over that little uh daily high that that's feasible too
So that's H-I-M-X. Next we have H-O-L-X. This one's a, a little bit uh, a little bit more wild of a chart than I, I typically look at, but you do have this uh, sideways action. And what I noticed here was ATR average true range got very, very tight through the last maybe two weeks is that? Yeah, December 10th through uh, current day. So very tight action through there, just sitting on the eight day exponential moving average. Again, this is the quadruple witching, forget about the volume on this day, but otherwise very light volume as everyone's agreeing on the price through here. Um, so I would be looking at a break. It's tough. You could maybe split up your buy order, uh, buy with a break over the previous day's high and then uh, the high from December 22nd possible buys. Um, but I, I would probably just be patient with a shortened trading week like this. I am not sure how much institutional buying is going to be happening. So the people that are actually pushing the price of these stocks up, uh, we might might not get too much in this week. So I'm going to be a little bit more patient with the setups and say, uh, wait for a break over 76, 7636 on this name. But that's HOLX. You can see strong uptrend, 250.28. Next we have JHG. So same kind of story, 250.28, uh, kind of a double bounce through here. Uh, off the highs, pulled back only 8%. Uh, not the, I guess the fastest moving name, but still has some power behind it. Average true range coming in a ton. Everything's getting nice and tight. Volume the last week, even outside of the quadruple witching, you can see volume coming in the last kind of breakout through here, nice and high, and then everything got quiet. And that's exactly what you want to see in a a pretty shallow pullback, but enough time where the two the 20 day simple moving average is catching up. On Thursday, you had an inside day. So a break over Wednesday's high of 32.56 would be my buy point on that. This is JGH. Next, we have LPRO. So if you guys are enjoying yourself, please leave a like. And like I said in the beginning, uh, if I am not mentioning any stocks that you think are set up, make sure you comment them below so I'm more prepared come Monday. So LPRO, very strong uptrend through here. Um, this is another name where I'd love to give it another week or so for the 20-day simple moving average to catch up, but uh, has enough power and had an inside day on Thursday. So inside day on Thursday and in a long lower wick on Wednesday. So you can see this got brought under a previous low, tried to sell off and found a lot of buyers that rallied it back up. Uh, it was still a red day, but not as bad as the, the wick shows. Um, and then inside day on Thursday, average to range that could use some work coming in a little bit more, but uh, you'd like to see this kind of volume on, on that breakout. So if we break over uh, the high from Wednesday, 34.21, that's viable. But uh, ideally, this is a second half of the week setup if this tightens up. That's LPRO. Now we're down to the final five. MTA is next. Another one where you have that rocket base. So let's zoom out. You had a move, whoops. You had a move up of 99%, but instead of a 25% pullback, you got a 30% pullback. Typically those need a little bit more time to, to base up. And you see uh, it does that, runs right to the high, actually breaks over, checks back, and then gets going. Uh, rallies all the way up. And then again, this is that quadruple witching. So it's not a huge sell off. If anything, uh, the volume was coming to run it right back up to close the day higher. Uh, but we got some sideways action to the eight day exponential moving average. This is a, another very thinly traded name, only 120,000 shares traded on Thursday. Thursday was a half day as well. So, um, but sitting right on that eight day. Uh, if we continue to pull lower, we have the 20 day simple moving average to watch for support. Maybe that sets up in a week or so. But um, if we break over Wednesday's high, 1161, that, that's the possible buy point that I'm looking at. 
I don't I don't love buying diagonals unless it also like sets up with the previous low. So I guess maybe that could work, but not on Monday, maybe on Tuesday. But yeah, the lower you buy in a pullback, the higher chance you have of the pullback just continuing and stopping you out of the trade, but you have that lower average cost. So if it does immediately break out, then you're making more money, but your probability of making money on the trade is a little bit less. So you got to always balance those risk rewards. So that's MTA. Next, we have Micron MU. Uh, really strong breakout through here. I don't know why I wasn't looking at this before, but 61% move higher and then kind of two pullbacks. The second pullback uh, found support right at that 20 day, has closed right around that price a couple times. Uh, as with a couple other names, volume coming in uh, this week. And we had average true range tightening up. What I would be looking for is a break over Tuesday's high, 71.78. So have almost two daily highs right, right there. But if we can just go through there, that would be a possible buy point. Um, otherwise, if this needs to, to flag out a little bit more, um, that's fine. But you're also sitting uh, just below this volume shelf. So a break over this point uh, would get you through that first bar. But a little bit lower. Uh, I would say a little bit lower quality pullback because this is only 61%. It's not a high tight flag. It doesn't have as much power behind it as those names, but it is a larger traded stock. Uh, you're not going to face liquidity issues with this one. So that's Micron MU. Next, we have PLG. Uh, very strong move up here with volume. So 260% up, pullback of 25%. So right on that high tight flag. Um, requirement and then some sideways action sitting on the eight day exponential moving average volume looking exactly like you want to see um, high volume coming in very low volume uh, outside of that and then looking for I, I would say a break over Tuesdays you know of Wednesday's high of 532 would be viable um, and then outside of that, you're also over the volume shelf there, which is ideal. Um, so a lot of power behind the name. Did want to point out one um, strike against the stock. If we zoom back out enough, you do see uh, some overhead volume. Not sure exactly what was going on with this name back then, but uh, does look to be acting exactly how we like to see in the present day. But that is a strike against the setup. So that's PLG. Next, we have Palantir, PLTR. Uh, this is one with a lot of eyes on it. So um, I could see this because so many people are trying to, to play it uh, the same way. I could see this reversing and shaking out under some previous lows. Um, but it has defined a, a very uh, nice buy point. I'm already in the stock with a break over this little pivot through there. Um, so I have some profit already on the name. But... Let me draw that back. A break over the two daily highs here. So 29.42, 29.39, 29.42 we'll go with, uh, would be viable there. I liked Thursday's kind of pullback, shake out Wednesday's low and touch right on that eight day exponential moving average. Uh, we'll see if that holds. Otherwise, um, like I said, if everyone's expecting one thing to happen, typically uh, we see the opposite. So you might see this pull lower take out some lows and then set up a little bit later because it, this did after the very strong move up, this did pull back 38%. So it, it might need to kind of base out a little bit more. So wouldn't be shocked if this pulls back again, but a uh, nice defined buy point for you if it does just take off. And we'll wrap it up with QRTEA. Uh, E-Trade's chart's a little funky on this one. Not sure what's going on, but uh, you do have just under a high tight flag, 80% move up. Uh, nice pullback here. Let's measure that out. Pullback of only 16%. You had a mini rally, another pullback. So you got kind of a cup and handle. Um, then going diagonal, you can see we broke over that on Thursday. Uh, but if you're looking at just a previous high buy, 
here at 11.05 would be a possible buy point. Um, so that, that's what I'm looking at, 11.05 as a possible buy. Uh, again, those diagonals, because we've had two weeks of breakouts going, maybe the, the market's a little bit exhausted, so I'm going to be more careful with my setups, buy a little bit later into the breakouts to, to make sure uh, I've already seen the volume coming in um, through those lower breakout points. But uh, again, this is one with uh, some power behind the name and a a very uh, very easy buy point with that that previous high. All right, so that is our breakout watch list for the week. We got 20 stocks for you. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and comment on any stocks that I didn't show today that you think have breakout potential. Uh, if you're not yet subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. We do these uh, watch lists on Sunday morning, a live stream either on Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on how the week's going, and then a trading recap on Friday. Uh, I post the most on stock twits, so that would probably be the best place to follow me, but also on Twitter and TikTok. That's Stock Trick Nick on Twitter and Stock Tricks with Nick on Stock Twits and TikTok. All right, have a great week, and I'll see you guys on Tuesday for the live stream.